Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Dark. This is from June 8th, 2021. Good news. The shows are shorter now. Um, the days of, I think, two and a half hour long darks where it would be so many matches that they wouldn't say the correct amount of matches because they would lose count are gone. Um, more good news. Uh, we see some new faces um, on the enhancement side of it. Um, not, no great shakes as far as significant promo segments. Um, their main event is nothing to write home about, but then again, this is AEW Dark, which I would call their C show, AEW Dark Elevation being the B show, and of course, Dynamite, which is going to be tomorrow night on Friday, um, being their A show. And as the C show, we lower our expectations, right? At the same time, it's pretty good. Excalibur and Taz, I, I would say that they curbed their lesser, baser instincts to let the show dev devolve into an inside joke giggle fest, which it has done lately. They actually kept that stuff a little more in check. And I think the show tends to go much better when they do that. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts joins us for commentary on the first one. Um, we don't have fans in attendance and mass, but we do have the wrestler crowd. And um, certainly that wrestler crowd helped us get through COVID. Um, and they do an amicable job here. We got Lance Archer against Zicky Dice. Zicky Dice, who's been making the rounds on the Georgia scene, who I saw on the Florida scene um, before that. Um, and he just gets squishy, squishy, squashed by Lance Archer. Now, on these matches that are we would call squash matches or enhancement matches or foregone conclusion matches, you get one check for the proper person being put over, a second check mark if they look good in the process, and a third check mark if the person in the losing effort looks really good or is given a disproportionately large amount of offense. Zicky Dice did not get a disproportionately large amount of offense, but certainly made Lance Archer look good. So three checks all around. Uh, Matt Hardy is at the bar with TH2. He says he's happy. Matt Hardy is happy that TH2 is in the freelance business. He needs some, someone to handle Christian for him before their match in two weeks. Um, 4200 is the asking price, but if they can delete Christian Cage, he'll double his payout. Hardy talks about how Cage has been at his side throughout his career, and he, he offers a spot to HFO to TH2 if they get the job done for a small fee, of course. Jack Evans is pumped up, but Hardy wants Angelico to face Cage, and Angelico takes on the challenge. Good. We've got a little plotty, plotty, plot, plot going on. Ricky Starks is now on commentary. Abaddon against Willow Nightingale. It's exactly what you would expect. Um, Abaddon scares her, beats her up, and... Um, I did like that she did a little something different. This wrap her leg around Nightingale's head and drives it into a DDT for the win. Um, are they taking my advice and not using the Widow's Peak as a finisher? I hope that is the case. This finisher looked much, much better to me. Three check marks. Uh, Nightingale looked good here um, and really helped Abaddon um, shine in this match. Next match, match number three, Cesar Bononi with his wingman against Cyrus. Cyrus, big time Georgia guy. Cyrus, who uh, beat me up uh, before I got color in the uh, War Games cage one year when we turned Chip Day heel at PCW. So I love Cyrus. Thrilled to see him here. He does a great job making, because Cesar Bononi can be kind of awkward. But Cyrus definitely is in the right place at the right time. Um, gets up for that Argentine slam. Um, great job by Cyrus. He may be our performer of the week. In fact, I'm going to guess that he is. Three check marks. Great job. Now it's just Excalibur and Taz on commentary. Angelico against Matthew Justice. This is what it should be, which is since Angelico has a mission against Christian Cage, he should make quick work of Justice and does exactly that. Does the Navarro death roll, Justice taps out. Dante Martin is outside, says it's an honor to wrestle Matt Seidel. Uh, but he says he's not taking him on as a fan, but as a competitor. He says Seidel may be good, but he's not top flight. Good little promo. Dark is exactly the place to let the guys try out their promo chops. 
and I got no problem with it. Ricky Starks is back on commentary, and Tay Conti with negative one at ringside. I uh, wish they wouldn't do it, but so it goes. Against Natalia Markova. Markova looks good, but no one couldn't look as good as Tay Conti, papi. Tay Conti looks great here. Her wrestling just sharpens up more and more. She's apparently the number two contender to the women's title and wins here with her DD Tay. Now it's just Excalibur and Taz on commentary again. Chaos Project against JP and Tommy Daly. By the way, three check marks all around. We have not had a competitive match. If we actually have one, I'll let you know what the standards are for that. But this is most certainly not that. Though they do give JP and Tommy Daly a disproportionately large amount of offense, so that's a check mark. Chaos Project wins definitively. That's a check mark. And uh, they look good in the process, so that's a third check mark. Alex Marvez is backstage with Joey Janela. He says it's bad boy summertime. Um, says some gross stuff. Uh, Sunny Kiss come in and he and Janela hug. Janela notes Kiss is his BFF. So he'll be out there for Kiss during his match. Janela walks off with Marvez. Marco Stunt against Ariel Dominguez. Um, this is about making Marco Stunt look good, and Ariel certainly does that. Marco Stunt looks strong. Hits that uh, slice bread DDT for the win. Marco Stunt wins. Good stuff here. Three check marks. Aaron Solo versus Sonny Kiss. I'll call this competitive. And in competitive matches, if both people look good, that's a check mark. In this case, most certainly true. If uh, somebody is put over in a definitive fashion that helps their career, I think Aaron Solo getting this win um, does help his career. So I'm going to give that a second check mark. And then in competitive matches, if something is advanced um, angle-wise or character-wise or gimmick-wise, then I'll give that a third check mark. Yes, um, because the factory beat down on Kiss and Janela does not come out to save Kiss. So that definitely advances something along those lines. So three check marks. And we've got a three check mark all night long kind of night going so far. It's like a no-hitter, though. We'll try not to talk about it too much to jinx it. Justin Roberts allows Vicky Guerrero to yell, excuse me. Guerrero says, I wish I had a stick so you could go fetch it. Introduces Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose mows through, but not in super menacing heel fashion, but definitely destroys Misa Kate, but not with the usual malice, which makes sense to me. But then Guerrero lays Rose's new shirt on Kate that says, I survived Nyla Rose. Hmm. Three check marks. Ricky Starks back on commentary. Bear Bronson against QT Marshall. Most definitely not a competitive match. But QT Marshall does give um, a good amount of offense to Bear Bronson. Bryson. Three check marks. Uh, wins with the diamond cutter combo. Thunder Rosa against Megan Bain. Uh, Thunder Rosa always gives um, anybody, even if she's squashing them, a good amount of offense, and no no exception here. And uh, Megan Bain certainly looks good. Uh, Thunder Rosa always, always looks tremendous and does a different submission, as she's been doing. She's been showing that she can tap you out in a lot of different ways, in this case, an ankle lock, three check marks. Dark Order, uh, in this case, Cole Cabana 10 and Stu Grayson with negative one at ringside grown. Against Dan Barry, Justin Law, and Kit Sackett. Um, typical Dark Order squash match where they take some offense from the opposing team, but then they show off their sort of like, I would only describe it as like chain big moves where they go from one of the Dark Order to the other, hitting big stuff. They eventually win. Colt Cabana, 10, and Stu Grayson win. With uh, Grayson, Stu Grayson getting the win with a Nightfall, which is a little unexpected, honestly. Three check marks and Big Swollen Kylan King with Red Velvet at ringside against the Sea Stars, the twins Ashley and Delmi XO. XO. How's the match? It's pretty good. They keep it short, sweet. I think that's smart. Um, King hits the Kingdom Fall move, which I really like. Three check marks, and we're off to the races. Tony Schiavone's backstage with the Factory. Yes, Marshall about the Factory's recent run of success. 
Marshall tells Shivani how to pronounce his name and wants Shivani to say QT Marshall pinned the Prince of Wrestling Cody Rhodes in the middle of the ring. Shivani says it lethargically at first, but Marshall makes Shivani say it the way he used to and does so. What jerks. Then finally, our de facto main event, so we'll call this a competitive match, Dante Martin of Top Flight. Boy, his partner must be really, really hurt. Against Matt Seidel with Mike Seidel at ringside. Good match. Um, he lets the kids shine for a while, but then Matt Seidel puts him away with the lightning spiral. And that's the end of the show. Nothing too exciting, but that does mean three check marks, which means we have officially the 10th time that AEW Dark in its 80-some-odd episode history has gotten three check marks all night long. This is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling.